Good afternoon, I'm Shane Masters with the Midday News. A special welcome to viewers on OneSpotMedia.com. Despite efforts by road safety officials, the country's target for recording under 300 road fatalities will again not be met this year. This comes as the National Road Safety Council is predicting that 2019 could end with more than 400 road deaths. Meanwhile, the director of the Road Safety Unit, Knute Hare, has renewed his call for motorists to do more. TVJ's Anthony Lug reports. 365, the number of persons killed in road crashes since the start of the year. The Christmas season is fast approaching with scores of parties scheduled. It's expected that the figures will increase. The country's target for recording under 300 road fatalities will not be met this year, with predictions from the National Road Safety Council that the number could be higher than 400. Speaking at the Red Stripe Occupational Safety and Health Knowledge Forum, Director of the Road Safety Unit, Knute Hare, had a warning for road users. But first... The first man I love died. And it's hatred I have for motor vehicle crashes. Hatred. It's a robbery. It's a robbery. It's robbery of your loved ones. It's robbery of your families. It's robbery of your friends. It's robbery of organizations of productive workers. The National Road Safety Council has been on a campaign to keep the number of road fatalities below 300 on an annual basis, but has faced significant challenges. Mr. Hare noted that almost 90% of persons killed in road crashes are males. Dying, leaving their children. Shutter driving, hot foot driving, hot head driving. Foolishness, rubbish, stupidity. And dead left the children to beg. Dead left the children to suffer. Meanwhile, since 2012, Road fatalities have been steadily increasing, and in recent years, motorcyclists have become the new cause for concern. A death in a traffic crash is an untimely, unnecessary death. Take your time where you're going. You have the people at workplace to go. They are depending on you to work for them. Your family members are depending on that resource that you earn to go to school, to go to party, to go to foreign. Anthony Log, TVJ News. The issue of the protection of citizens' data will be taken more seriously. Speaking at the latest edition of the JIS Think Tank, CEO of EGOV Jamaica, Maurice Bishop, noted that what was transpiring within government offices and agencies was independent storage of customers' information on servers and mini data centers. But there were great risks in that the level of security of that data was way below international standards. As TVJ's Prince Moore now reports, that will change with the centralization of information, which, we, which will be taken over by EGOV Jamaica. Increased security of government documents and the personal information of their customers. That is what is being promised by EGOV Jamaica with the centralization of data from government ministries, departments, and agencies. For years, questions have been lingering about the safety of documents within government agencies and the likelihood of cyber attacks. It was again brought to the fore when the Andrew Holness-led administration pushed for the National Identification System, NIDS. The opposition had challenged aspects of the bill dealing with the security of personal data, which led to the court ruling it null and void. But CEO of EGOV, Maurice Bishop, says with this new approach of a centralized data system, the prevalence of cyber attack will be less. Um, if you have one weak link in your system that can affect your entire system, so no matter how strong it is that you want to make uh, one or two entities, um, because the government is connected, and that is the way we're going. Now we can put systems in place where we can ensure that the, 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 the monitoring of the email systems um, goes to each and every entity, and not just those entities which can afford to put in the expensive equipment or monitoring tools or antivirus solutions or anti-malware. Mr. Bishop also noted that other measures of security are being looked at to protect personal information such as public key infrastructure or PKI. Just having a username and password to, to authenticate you is not strong enough. And so you, 
introduced this concept of of, of public and private keys and a digital certificate. But what needs to be done to have that sort of infrastructure? We have to implement what we call a PKI infrastructure, and that will include what we call a certifying authority. In fact, laws currently exist to support that right now, and it has been there through our Electronic Transaction Act. Um, and the Trade Board is the official certifying authority right now. What we want to do, we want to know quote-unquote almost um, sort of implement that. So having it on the books is for, for so long, we actually have not utilized that. The eGov head says that system will ensure that the entities are authorized to conduct business through the centralization of information. Prince Moore, TVG. Despite the depreciation of the Jamaican dollar over the past few weeks, the government is insisting that it is good for the foreign exchange market. The currency has been on a downward trajectory for some time, with the Jamaican dollar selling at a high of $142.23 on Tuesday. But speaking on TVJ's All Angles last night, Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark says the day-to-day -day fluctuation will not affect the country's economy. He says what must be watched is the average rate of a currency and the country's inflation rate. It is the average exchange rate over a period of time that matters. And when you look at the average exchange rate over the, the, the last 12 months and compare it with the average exchange rate over the previous 12 months, you'll see that the, the variation is uh, quite small in comparison to what we are, you are describing in terms of the point-to-point -point moves. And then the, the third thing I'll say is that what ultimately affects individuals, consumers and businesses, is the rate of inflation. Now the rate of inflation definitely incorporates the exchange rate, but it incorporates the average exchange rate, not a point on November the 13th or what the exchange rate is on March the 5th. Meanwhile, in a bid to temper the depreciation of the currency, the Bank of Jamaica injected a total of 70 million U.S. dollars in the foreign exchange market over two days. Mr. Clark says that interference by the central bank will have to end soon. And it's now time for a break, but stay with us. More stories right after these messages. Welcome back. Continuing with the news. The plan to move a motion to suspend the counselor for the Brownstone Division, Kim Brown Lawrence from the St. Anne Municipal Corporation, may not happen today as was planned by Minority Leader Winston Brown. On Tuesday, the Minority Leader announced his intention to move the motion to suspend Mrs. Brown Lawrence because of her arrest and charge in connection with former Education Minister Royal Reed in the CMU scandal. However, Mayor of St. Anne's Bay Michael Belnavis says a required one-month notice for motions to be presented was not given. They brought in a letter to the council during the course of the week uh, indicating that they wanted to present this at the meeting. But the regulations show that it has to be give, a notice has to be given in writing to the council and then uh, we'll accept it based on the chairman's acknowledgement of the of the resolution. Mayor Bell Navis believes the move is being made to score political points. However, he says since the proper procedure was not followed, no such action can be taken Thursday. Well, this is straightforward. No notice was given, so they cannot come with anything to present to have any sort of action taken against the councillor um, unless they present the notice. And that notice can be can be um, done at the council meeting, and I presume they'll, they'll do that, recognizing that they erred and weren't able to get themselves together. Quite honestly, it's a bungling on the part of the, uh, the minority leader and, and the PMP councillors, and they should have taken the opportunity from last month if they really wanted to get this thing going. However, the minority leader, Winston Brown, is refusing to budge from his intention to table a motion to have Mrs. Brown Lawrence barred. I've been listening to Mayor Bell Nevis and what he's saying, but if you should go further at the Paris Council, at the Local Government Act, Section 441 states, any member misconduct 
are bring are brought the council into disrepute, then we have the we have the, we have the right to move a resolution at any meeting of the council with two-third members of the council as president. But Mayor Bell Navis says Mrs. Brown Lawrence did not bring the council into disrepute. The fact is that she has not done anything within the spectrum of the council or as a councillor mm. bring the council into disrepute. Um, that situation is almost a separate, a separate situation outside the sphere of the, of the municipal corporation. Justice Minister Delroy Chuck has identified a temporary relocation for some court staff who have been displaced by a fire at the Mandeville Courthouse in Manchester last Thursday. He toured a nearby plaza on Wednesday, which he says can be retrofitted to house several officers. There are also rooms there that we think can be retrofitted to have the court, parish courts operating from there. Whether the circuit court will be able to operate from there is still undecided. We have to look at other possibilities for circuit next year but that is on a, not immediately urgent. What is urgent is for the parish courts to be able to operate here in Mandeville. And certainly, if things go according to plan, the parish courts will start operating by the end of the month. He says the Commissioner of Lands has sent evaluator to help assess another government-owned property in the Manchester capital, which will provide a more permanent court arrangement. Once it is purchased, it's about three acres of land right here in central Manchester. And if that purchase comes off, then we are hoping with cabinet's blessing and approval that um, we can start building early next year. Court staff have been temporarily relocated to attend following Thursday's fire, which destroyed a section of the parish court. There is a call for more Jamaicans to get tested for diabetes as the deadly disease is on the rise and causing serious complications. TVJ's Shamala Pullen reports. Diabetes affects an estimated 236,000 Jamaicans, and the figures could be higher. The 2016-2017 Jamaica Health and Lifestyle Survey shows that 4 out of 10 persons with diabetes were unaware they had the disease. Consultant physician and lecturer at the University of the West Indies, Dr. Swan Rowe Gardner, says this points to the need for more Jamaicans to test for diabetes. So Mary Jones was living her life, going to her usual meetings and job, etc. But one day she started having some symptoms of just generally feeling malaise, not feeling well. So Miss Jones went to see the physician and the doctor hearing her story thought it would be important to check for diabetes mellitus. Doctor said, Ms. Jones, your fasting blood glucose is high. It's really high. In fact, it is 23 and normal is 11. And you can imagine the distress. Questions that she will ask, am I going to die? And I've had patients ask me a question, how long do I have to live now? Am I going to die now? You know, I, I don't think I can live with this condition. And those are some of the questions that Ms. Jones begin to ask herself. What am I going to do now? Am I going to still be able to do my job? Would I have to stop working? Dr. Rowe Gardner says if Jamaicans fail to do early checks for symptoms, it increases their risk of dangerous complications such as stroke, heart disease, and even amputation. Persons with diabetes, because the small nerves in the feet are damaged, you will step on a, uh, uh, something that will break the, the skin or, or cause a bruise or a laceration. You don't know. You actually do not feel it. And when you recognize that you have an injury, the wound is infected and it's smelling. And sometimes that is how persons with diabetes know they have a wound. Dr. Rowe Gardner says there are persons who have been diagnosed with diabetes but are afraid to face the reality. She encourages them to change their mindset and start managing the condition. So I'm saying, okay, all right, this is what you're going to do. Change your mindset, right? So if you, you used to eat five mangoes, eat half. So you're, still, so you're still able to eat up to taste the mango. Thursday is celebrated as World Diabetes Day under the theme Family and Diabetes. Shamela Pullen, TVJ News. Jamaica could play host to a major Caribbean leadership conference next year. It is being contemplated by famed international clergyman Bishop T.D. Jakes. 
As you'll hear in this report, local tourism officials are already excited about the prospects. First came Kanye West with his Sunday service at Emancipation Park in October. Kingston, we love you. God loves you. Now, the head of United States Mega Church Potter's House, Bishop T.D. Jakes, revealed plans on Tuesday for a Caribbean type leadership conference. December 2020 is the tentative timeline. It's among the highlights of talks with Minister of Tourism Ed Bartlett. The two met in Trelawney on Tuesday, where ideas for collaboration were also discussed. And we're excited about the possibilities of perhaps doing some events here in Jamaica that I think would be of interest not only to Jamaican people in general, but we, we sit on the precipice and the intersection of business and faith. So leadership development, business and faith can collaboratively create a more wholesome atmosphere for opportunities for education. Bishop Jakes explained that the event will open opportunities for a wide cross-section of local professionals. I want to make a special a cry out to all of the artistic people, producers, developers, so forth and so on. Uh, we stand on the verge of per perhaps creating opportunities for your expertise to be used. And uh, I look forward to discussing it further. Uh, artists, uh, ministers, business leaders, CEOs, executives, we covered a wide berth of subjects that I think you would find interesting, not just faith, but faith and business because Jesus said if you see a man naked, he doesn't need a word, he needs a coat. If he's barefoot, he doesn't need God bless you, he needs shoes. And so we're talking about practicalizing our faith in ways that you can have a tangible impact, and I believe that's possible. Tourism Minister Ed Bartlett highlighted the importance of the event. Because he has a database and, and, a, and a following of 16 million people across the country, just a single posting about Jamaica on his page is going to be seen by 16 million people. The invitation, therefore, is huge, and the, the implications are equally huge for um, growth and development for, for our industry to begin with. But beyond that, we are talking about practical investment. We're talking about investment in hotels, we're talking about investment in real estate, but also investment in community development, and the Potter's House and the community around it. The bishop was among 1,800 cruise visitors who were part of the Bishop T.D. Jakes 2019 Faith and Family Cruise on the MS New Amsterdam, which birthed at the Falmouth Pier on Tuesday. In news overseas, a shooting at a Southern California high school in the United States this morning left multiple people injured, while at least two are in critical condition. The Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department said the suspected gunman, an Asian male wearing black clothing, who was last seen at Sagos High School in Santa Clarita, was at large. Sagos High was placed on lockdown as well as neighboring elementary schools. News now in sports. At sports time, Afghanistan needing 165 runs for victory are 97 for 7 in their first T20 international against the West Indies in Lucknow, India. Najibullah Zadran, 27, and Ashgar Afghan, 25, were the top scorers for Bangladesh so far. The Caribbean side batting first posted 164 for 5 with Evan Lewis, 68, and Captain Kieran Pollard, 32, not out the top scorers. Gulbadin Naib was a pick of the Afghanistan bowlers with 2 for 24. And the West Indies women will look to keep their 2020 International Series alive when they face India women in the third of five matches at the Providence Stadium in Guyana today. The Caribbean ladies, who are playing without Captain Stephanie Taylor, who is out due to injury, have lost their last two T20 Series to England and Australia. They lost the first game of a series by 84 runs and the second by 10 wickets. The match falls off at 5 p.m. Jamaica time. And that's the midday news. I'm Shane Masters. Join us at 7 for primetime news. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, good afternoon.